At times you may be working with several asynchronous processes and you need the results of all of them. Usually this requires the use of promise.all. For a while when I needed to use promise.all, I would always use promises. But you can also use an async function with promise.all. We're going to look at that in this tutorial. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to Patreon if you'd like to support this channel and get access to the code files. There's also a link to earn script. Now, if you're unfamiliar with promises in asynchronous JavaScript, I will link to a playlist of several tutorials that will help you get up to speed on that. Also, I have a link for a discount on all my courses, one of which is on asynchronous JavaScript. I focus specifically on that. Now, as mentioned, I will usually use a chain of promises when dealing with multiple asynchronous processes. But that is not always the easiest to read and reason about. A chain of promises can sometimes be a bit confusing. So in this tutorial, I want to show how to set up an easier way to retrieve multiple asynchronous processes using an async function with promise.all. Let's look at it. Now first let me explain what I have here. I have three fetch statements that are going out to JSON placeholder site. This is just a site that allows you to work with and retrieve data from a site API. It's mainly for practice, but I have three fetch statements. They're all going out retrieving that and they're converting it. We have the JSON method here. So once that promise is received, it converts it. This returns a promise as well. And so the todos variable contains a promise that has the results of the todos. The comments contain a promise that have the results of the comments. And then the posts contains a promise that has the results of the promise. So here's three fetch statements that go out and get data that I need to retrieve. Now, if I were doing this with a promise chain, I'd have to do them one at a time. And that would take longer because I'd have to wait for one to return before I could send the other and that one to return before I could send the other and so on. That's not an optimal way to do it. It takes longer to do. And that's where promise.all comes in. With promise.all, we can enter in an array of promises and it will wait for all of them to resolve, all of them to finish, and then it returns a promise. And the results of that promise contain the results of all of the promises that were included. Now, since promise.all returns a promise, I would usually set that up using a dot then method to see if it were resolved. For example, here's how I could set up promise.all. I add the to dos, I add the comments, add the posts. These are three promises. We don't know how long it will take to return these. It doesn't matter. Promise I will wait for all of them to be done. Once they're done, it will then invoke the then method. And we can handle it. Well, this could also be done inside an async function. I think it's cleaner. I can set things up to retrieve the data. And all of this could be in a function if I chose to. But I could set things up to retrieve the data. And then inside of an async function, I could deal with promise.all. Let's look at how I might do that. So I just set my function here. I'm going to call it retrieve all. And it's an async function. So I have to have the keyword async in front of the keyword function. And then the nice thing about an async function, we can use the await keyword to await for something to return. And it looks very synchronous. The code looks synchronous. It doesn't have the dot then and the, the promise chaining that we run into. Or it doesn't have the callback hell that we sometimes experience when we're just using callbacks. So it's a great way to deal with asynchronous code. So I can set it up like this. The results of this promise.all, I'm going to put into a variable called results, like this. But in order to make this line wait until everything is returned, I use the keyword await. 
So I use it right in front of promise.all. Let me get rid of this one down here. I don't need that anymore. And so that's going to wait. And the next line will not execute until we get the results back. And so from there on, we can deal with the results. I can enter code that will deal with the results. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just log the results to the console like this. So now that's all set up. And in order to get this to process, we just need to invoke this async function. So we could do that by calling it, or I could just immediately invoke it here. Either way. So let me save that. And we'll jump out. Let me open the console first before I refresh so we can see. And so it doesn't take too long for all three of those to resolve. But instead of doing one and then doing another and then doing the next one, we're able to do them all at once. And then we use promise.all to wait until they're all resolved. And then we deal with the results. And as you can see, we have an array for each one of those results that came back. This is the to-dos, I believe. Comments, probably. Posts, yeah. So we have all that data, and then we can work with it. So much cleaner way, I think, in setting this all up. Now, as I mentioned, if this were a function that we were using to get data before we needed to process it, the whole thing could be inside a function. Let's just call it init, something like that. And it would look something like this. And then when we're ready, we would just invoke that function. We're going to get the similar results here. So we come out and refresh. Once again, we get the console log statement with that data. So I think a cleaner way to deal with it using promise.all and an async function. All right, please hit that like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.